Winners Supermarket and Winners Cash and Carry, proud title sponsors of Season 12 of the Journey TV Show, Special Daily Ramadan Edition, 021-374-1114, www.sopertrading.com. Also follow Winners Supermarket on Facebook. This insert on the Journey TV show is proudly sponsored by Winner Supermarket and Winner's Cash and Carry. My name is MJ Lee and welcome to the Journey now broadcasting daily on CTV free to air in Cape Town and DSTV across the country, channel 263 on all three bouquets. When we say daily, we mean daily. Monday through to Sunday, normally watch the show on a Friday night, Saturday morning, Tuesday morning. Special surprise, you know, this one, indeed it is. It coincides with the comprehensive coverage that we're devoting to the month of Ramadan, and it gives us an opportunity to chat to you on a daily basis. Now, focusing on the holy month, and close to 2 billion Muslims, you know, scattered across the globe, um, exercising patience, engaging in the spiritual month, which we are aware of, but it's not only Muslims who fast um, as part of a tenet, uh, you know, connected to the Islamic faith. The other religions also, they do the same. Our first multi-faith discussion on the show. I'm going to introduce uh, uh, one of our guests because our second guest, Zainab Shafika, needs no introduction. She's been on the show forever as a co-producer and she's still only 22 years old. <laughs> Our first guest, uh, Nicole, a uh, welcome and uh, thanks for joining us on the journey. Thank you very much, MJ. Um, and then let's introduce our second <laughs> guest, our co-producer, Zainab Shafika. Zainab, on the other side of uh, the microphones where you're being interviewed, <laughs> I actually envy you. But thanks for joining <laughs> us. Thank you for having me. Um, Nicole, if you're talking about uh, fasting, we know that there are close to 2 billion Muslims currently fasting as a result of the month of Ramadan. Um, Christians also fast. Uh, I spoke to one of our cameramen a couple of days ago yes. who stems from the traditional uh, Tosa religion and he also spoke of a certain way that they actually engage in over a couple of days which is also fasting. Yes. Uh, from the Jewish faith, what is the perspective? Um, how is it that you engage in your period of fast, what do you do? Yes, well, uh, fasting is very integral to Judaism, mm. and we have two major fasts a year. Okay. Um, Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av are our major fasts. Yes. The duration of a major fast is twenty-five hours. Mm. It will be um, a night f a sunset to sunrise to, to sunset. Nightfall. Okay. Mm. No, sunrise to sunset will be our minor fast. Okay. Of mm. which there are about five men minor fasts. Yes. And there can also be other fasts. A bride and groom are required to fast on the wedding okay. day. Okay. Mm. Yes, as spiritual preparation for their lives wow. to follow. Mm. Yes. And um, Yom Kippur is arguably our holiest day mm. of the year. And we are required to abstain from all manner of physical participation in the world mm. and we spend Yom Kippur in the synagogue um, engrossed in prayer mm. and we um, we ask for forgiveness on mm. Yom Kippur and we hope to avert a severe um, decree or verdict mm. that we will be harshly judged by Hashem by our Creator yes. and therefore on Yom Kippur we ask for forgiveness for many many sins and it's customary in our prayers to beat our chest with our fist. 
Okay. And to ask for forgiveness, uh, as I say, there's um, dozens of sins that are listed in our prayer book, and we hope that the Creator will have mercy and forgive us mm. for those uh, sins, and that we will enjoy a, a year of health and prosperity and happiness um, absolved mm. from the sins we might have um, committed in the year past. And um, on Tisha B'Av, which is also a major fast. Mm. It's not as possibly as religious as Yom Kippur, but it's a day of mourning because mm. we commemorate um, both our temples were destroyed, mm. um, our first and second temple. And we commemorate um, those events on Tisha B'Av. And our rabbis have decreed that other very sad and tragic events can also be commemorated on, or are also commemorated on Tisha B'Av. Our Holocaust that occurred um, mm as you all know, and many other sad events mm. that happen to us. And then our five minor fasts are not as mournful, although they do commemorate um, other historical um, tragedies that befell us. But they're sunrise to sunset, and uh, we also abstain from eating and drinking on those fasts, but they're not maybe as extremely spiritual and mournful as Tisha B'Av would be, and they're maybe not um, of the intensity of Yom Kippur. Wow, very enlightening, uh, very yes. educational, very glad that we got you on the show for this <laughs> multi-faith discussion. Now, Zainab, if we're talking about Ramadan, uh, the perspective uh, from Islam, Muslims currently engaged in the Holy Month, something they do every year, maybe just as a brief explanation to the viewers of the show, because we accommodate for a balanced viewership uh, on the show. What is it that, that Muslims do uh, during the course of this holy month, 29 days, uh, 30 days? Maybe just a perspective from your side as a Muslim. Okay, Muhammad Janet, I'm not a religious theologist, but what I could do is highlight what I benefit from this holy month. And what I benefit would be physical, emotional, as well as spiritual. Mm. So firstly, fasting in the month of Ramadan is a natural detox for our body. Mm. Um, it rectifies our functioning um, to remove build up toxins and purifies our organs, preparing it for the work it faces for the 11 remaining months of the year. Mm. And secondly, our sense of caring is heightened um, due to being in one with those who are impoverished. Mm. And the only way you know people's condition is by living in their condition. Mm. So sharing what we have becomes easier, not only in the holy month of Ramadan, but the rest of the year as well. And thirdly, by experiencing these practices, um, we become healthier, um, we become more caring and compassionate towards our human beings, as well as our, you know, our animals, um, all of mankind, and then also our relationship and gratitude towards God, Allah, um, becomes stronger. Hmm. So it's a fresh appreciation for all that we have is renewed. Very interesting conversation that we're having at the moment on the journey, part of our special daily broadcast. We're devoting it uh, to comprehensive coverage. Um, it coincides with a number of things actually. Ramadan, it coincides with June, July, the school holidays. Kids must be safe at home. Let's get them active, not only in front of the televisions, on their smartphones and tablets. There are plenty of things that they can do. Uh, I think we must get the board games out also once again. Monopoly, uh, Scrabble, uh, Ludo. Are we still playing these games? I, I hope we are because, you know, it gets families together. So that's also something that we can look forward to. It's winter and it's importantly um, youth month as well, June. So lots for us to, to uphold and celebrate. Multi-faith uh, discussion that we're having on the journey. Quick visit uh, to our sponsors. We come back uh, roughly three minutes before we conclude. The two lovely ladies in conversation with us on the show. They will perhaps just in closing shed light on what they feel like when they undertake to complete their fast either as a Muslim or as someone from the Jewish uh, faith. Stay tuned to your favorite conversation. Coming back right now. Back from the break, it's your favorite conversation. Indeed it is the journey. Missed anything yesterday, last week, the day before. Zainab cooking up a storm in the kitchen. You want to check out that insert, that feature. We've got a dedicated YouTube channel, The Journey TV Show. 
Check it out online, subscribe, and please share it with your family and friends. We'd love it. Also on Facebook, the Jelly TV Show. In conclusion, three minutes before we wrap and head to our next segment on the show, a multi-faith discussion in the midst of Ramadan. We're speaking to Nicole, who stems from the Jewish faith, and also Zainab, no stranger uh, to all of us on the show, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I think just in conclusion, Nicole, you wanted to latch on to something, yes. and I think also latch on to and link it to what physical, emotional, spiritual feelings do you undergo yes. when you undertake to complete your fast? Well, if one can divert one's mind from being hungry and thirsty and try to uplift oneself spiritually, then mm. it can be a day of immense spirituality and inner purification. Mm. But what I did want to emphasize was that Judaism places a very uh, valuable premium on charity. Mm -hmm. And in our prayers on Yom Kippur, it says penitence, prayer and charity will avert the severe decree. Mm -hmm. So if we undertake to be charitable to, as Zainab said, those that have much less mm -hmm. than um, we do and those that are in need of um, assistance and um, those that are hungry and sick and all, all other forms of distress, if we perform charity, then the severe decree will also be nullified for us on Yom Kippur. Okay. And Zainab, just from your side in, in conclusion, feelings... You know, emotions, physically, spiritually, mentally. What is it like? What what a transition? You know, do you undergo in these various spheres during the course of, of fasting? What does it do for you, ultimately? Okay, like I mentioned actually before the break, that um, what it does for me is emotional, physical, as well as spiritual. And I think because in the month of Ramadan, you normally do increase your recitation of Quran, um, as well as your dhikr and your meditation. We increase our charity as well. And because you are increasing more than you would normally do, because you know you busy everyday life, and normally that month you all, you are in the same state like those who are in poverty and that's why you tend to um, increase on your charity and also I do feel that in the month of Ramadan it's like recharging your battery to take on the rest of the 11 months of mm. the year mm. recharging that's what we're currently doing and it's been a recharge and a good refresher reminder perhaps an introduction for us here on the journey chatting to Nicole giving us the perspective from the Jewish faith what it's like to fast you know and then also Zainab giving us the perspective from Islam as a Muslim undergoing that period 29 or 30 days and that's where we are right now in the holy month of Ramadan an opportunity to devote time to uh, improving our inner self and also you know share those opportunities with the less fortunate um, connect with us on the show via our social media channels also don't forget any suggestions you can mail us the journey tv show at yahoo.com this was the first of perhaps many more multi-faith uh, discussions to come on the show so stay tuned and also check out the show now on a daily basis comprehensive coverage in ramadan for june and july my name is mj lee keep on watching miss anything online youtube facebook i think we're doing it all the same stay tuned to the show Sound Tech N1 City and Promenade Mitchell's Plain, your one-stop techno shop specializing in computers and electronics. Stockers of peripherals, external hard drives, memory cards, flash drives, speakers, quality headphones and much, much more. Trusted in the game for over 25 years. Sound Tech N1 City and Promenade Mitchell's Plain, 021-595-40. Five seven or zero two one three seven six four two three seven. My name is MJ Lee and you're currently watching The Journey in Season 12. It's the daily broadcast as a result of a couple of things. Number one, primarily the holy month of Ramadan. It also coincides a portion thereof with Youth Day youth month empowering the youth providing them with alternatives that is absolutely imperative 
continue to watch the show. We're featuring a lot of youth on the show in Cape Town and across South Africa doing good work, you know, improving themselves and ultimately contributing towards the upliftment of their communities. And I think that is ultimately what Youth Day and Youth Month is about. Side by side with that, focusing on NGOs and um, winter projects, importantly, cold time in Cape Town, cold time in South Africa. What about other parts of the world? We spoke about partnering the Journey TV show with NGOs that are doing extensive work in South Africa and across the world. The national director joining us uh, uh, in studio on the show today uh, of Africa Muslims Agency, Mr. Imran Chunara. Mr. Chunara, welcome once again. We last chatted at the Radio 786 Ramadan Expo. Absolutely, MJC. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. So uh, it's great to have you uh, in studio and on set with us. Um, when we last spoke a good couple of days ago at the Ramadan Expo, we briefly touched on your uh, winter programs, uh, Ramadan uh, campaigns. Maybe I think just to get the viewers up to speed, how are those uh, campaigns and projects going to date? Well, MJ, you know, it's, it's interesting you ask because we've got, obviously, as you mentioned earlier, is that winter time now in South Africa is, I mean, we experience extreme cold in winter. Uh, especially in the central parts of South Africa. Here in the Western Cape, of course, a lot of wet weather, of course, and cold weather. Mm. And uh, so the Africa Muslims Agency, or uh, how it's sometimes known as well, is called Direct Aid International. We do, for the past 30 odd years now, we hand out thousands of blankets and food, of course, during the months of winter, mm. uh, typically four or five months of winter. Uh, and also with Ramadan coming now on our doorstep in, uh, in, the, in the month of Ramadan, mm. uh, of course, we hand out lots of food as well because yes. a lot of people are fasting during the month of Ramadan, people from the Muslim faith, of course, mm. uh, and, uh, and would require food uh, because they're fasting and they need to break their fast and children are fasting, there's children in schools that are fasting as well. So that's a big project that we do as well. But maybe the winter side of it, I mean, a few weeks ago already, what we do from Africa Muslims Agency or Direct Aid International is we partner with 80-odd organizations on the ground. Mm. So what we do is we find that there's many rural areas around Southern Africa that have really good organizations that are on the ground, that are on grassroots level, that actually know the people, know the needy families, mm. they know exactly where the need is. So instead of us trying to go and reinvent the wheel and re, you know, create yes. lists again, we'd rather find these organizations, find the work that they're doing. And then through our donors, be able to create, whether it's winter hampers, whether it's Ramadan hampers, whether it's food, whether it's blankets, scarves, gloves, hats, whatever the case is, and go and partner with these organizations and donate it to them. Mm. They then in turn go onto the ground and make sure that it's given to the needy families. They then send us report backs as well so that we can also make sure that there's transparency, mm. that our donors get to see where that actually went to. Mm. That's, so that's really, really important to us. So we did a, a, what we call a winter launch about now probably a month ago, a month and a half ago now, maybe two months. And uh, we call together different organizations around the country, uh, mm. and we do this distribution of thousands of blankets. That's just South Africa, for example. Mm. Just a few days ago, we had our Ramadan launch, which, of course, with Ramadan launch, what we do is we call the similar organizations again, finding out where they're working, and we put together thousands of big hampers that will last the family for a month, uh, for a whole month of, of Ramadan, uh, for feeding, and mm. they would have food that they could cook throughout the month of Ramadan. And then besides that, we do, again, about 10,000 what we call iftar packs, mm. which anybody who's fasting would know that at the time of breaking fast at sunset, yes. they would typically need a few basic uh, food items to break their fast. And these little iftar packs is uh, one per person, so to speak. So there's another 10,000 kind of meals during the month of Ramadan, if you want to call it that, for helping people break their fast as well. Now, just before we go to the break, Mr. Janara, if we're talking about um, Ramadan and winter, because we're practically in the heart of both, over the years, has Africa Muslims Agency identified certain areas in South Africa that presents you perhaps with the most challenges when it comes down to when your teams have to go down on the ground and actually do the work that you do. Certain areas perhaps that present you with the most challenges. You know, when I think about certain areas that present us with the most challenges, firstly, the benefit of being in South Africa is that there's a lot of people doing a lot of good work. There's a huge amount of NGOs and a lot of people on the ground, mm. which means it's fairly simple to get to areas once you know about it. Yes. The challenge is knowing about it. You go to some of these rural areas in South Africa 
And uh, for example, in KZN, in some parts of KZN, we don't even get to find out about what some of the people are suffering, how some of the people are suffering, until sometimes, I mean, you'll get to some of the villages in, the, in KwaZulu-Natal, mm. where some of our staff members would end up visiting an orphanage, and mm. they would find out that nobody really gets to the I mean, orphanage, it's an orphanage. We think an orphanage being this amazing infrastructure, this building or this mm -hmm. institute or school or whatever, mm. that housing these kids, whatever. An orphanage can be some woman in her hut somewhere in a rural area that there were kids who often their parents have died for whatever reasons whether it's HIV, AIDS, whatever the story is could be the case is and these kids are typically taking care of themselves it's children led households mm. and, and, and some women would take them in and that's an orphanage now it may not be de defined as an orphanage uh, you know, in legal terms mm. but she's looking after orphans and to find, she doesn't, she doesn't know where to find help she can't get on the internet and yes. find somebody so you find someone in a rural area like that and you send a team out there, you change lives instantly just by being able to do that. Of course, in the Western Cape, I mean, you think about areas like Mitchell's Plain, different parts of Mitchell's Plain. Mm. You think about areas like, um, uh, you know, Kailit, Chalanga. I mean, these are just the areas you know about. Mm. Then there's areas where, you know, when you really go out in the northern suburbs, you really go into the deep southern suburbs and you find people that live in what you would consider Fail, not affluent, but you'd consider that okay areas, if you want to call it that. Mm. And the sense of, people have a sense of pride, obviously. I mean, hey, not many people want to be able to say that, look, I'm working, but I can't afford blankets for my family. Yeah. And you find out about that, and you go into people's homes, and you realize there's nothing. In some of these areas that you and I would drive past every day thinking, no, it should be okay. And then you find out. And you, you see the difference that it makes to people's lives. So honestly, you know, what we encourage people to do, especially the viewers today, would be just think about your neighbors. You don't know what's going on. Mm. Sometimes you have no idea what's going on down the road. Mm. And that's really important to be aware of. Mr. Junara, thanks so much for joining us on the journey, shedding light on your Ramadan and winter projects. We look forward to a follow-up conversation with you. Absolutely, 100%. And thank you for having us on the show once again. And thanks to the viewers for watching. If you've missed it, you need to check it out on our YouTube channel. Eh? Subscribe the Journey TV Show. We'll also post some info on our Facebook page in the same namesake, the Journey TV Show. If you want to become part, contribute, donate, you want to contact Africa Muslims Agency throughout the few minutes that we've, you know, been having this conversation with the National Director, info has appeared on screen in fact as we speak right now and as we conclude it still is we quickly go to a break we come back the journey continues on the other side of this pop on down to sound tech with branches across cape town for these great specials Always in my heart and mind Your name is mentioned every day I'll follow you no matter what God will to me one day Cause I believe Pop on down to Winner's Supermarket For these great June 2015 And Ramadan specials like and blessings so always in my heart and mind Your name is mentioned every day I'll follow you no matter what God will to me one day Cause I believe Radio 786 on 100.4 FM A media partner of the Journey TV Show, Season 12, Special Daily, Ramadan Edition. Join me, MJ Lee. And myself, Zainab Shafika, for your weekly, ever popular, live style-based show, The Journey. It is the one show that has broadcast 11 seasons successfully and more than 158 episodes later. Now, coming your way, a special Journey Show, Ramadan edition, that will be broadcast daily, effectively, from June 2015. You have to tune in on a daily basis. 
Fridays 7.30 p.m., Saturdays 5.30 a.m., Sundays 5 p.m., Mondays 8 a.m., Tuesdays 6 a.m., Wednesdays 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays 5.30 a.m. For the most balanced, integrated and comprehensive coverage of the Holy Month, tune in to your favorite show, The Journey, free to air on CTV in Cape Town and across Southern Africa on all three major bouquets on DSTV, channel 263. Make us part of your company and tune into The Journey daily for a special Ramadan edition. The Journey Show, proudly sponsored by 